Okay, so further debugging of this monitor for the Vector 3. When we turn off the lights, or actually even with the lights on, you can see that the filament is indeed lit. And so the next thing we're going to do is measure the voltage on the anode to make sure it's getting that high voltage. Vasty scallywags. This, look at this thing. And the connector is weird. It does not seem to want to connect to any of my modern DMMs. And it seems to only want to connect to this Simpson meter. Whoops, it would go that direction. And it doesn't want to connect to that Simpson meter. So we're going to use this Simpson meter. But first, I want to measure the input impedance on this Simpson meter on this rating. We're going to try it at the 250 volts. So measuring that, I measure a 5 mega ohm input impedance. So let's see, I think most of these probes expect something like a 10 meg input impedance, but this should be close enough to get something in the ballpark. Just as a minor precaution, I'm going to take off my wedding ring here. Don't worry, honey, I'll put it right back on. Okay, first thing I have this ground hooked up. And now if you look down at the Simpsons meter, we're gonna plug these in. It's important to make sure all of this is plugged in before you start messing around with this, so you don't get arcing or whatever. This electronic rapier, seriously, I can't get over how big this thing is. Yeah, well, that's for our safety. Okay, so I'm plugging in the computer now, and we're gonna flip the thing on. All right, here, here goes hum. nothing. Okay, notice I'm only gonna do this with one hand. So I've got my other hand, left hand in my pocket. Oh, wait, I hear buzzing. Oh, yep, there we are. Okay, what do we read? That's something like, or it's like settling at 60, I guess. Assuming a multiplication factor of 100, this is at six kilovolts. And I'd just like to give a special shout out to this user, David JH7, who told us that around six to 10 kilovolts is precisely what we're looking for. So uh, thanks, David, really appreciate it. All right, so we basically choked the life out of this thing until it died. Okay, yeah, we turned it off and then watched the voltage drop, the anode voltage after you switch it off. It was kind of pathetic, actually. It was kind of like, the sound was like letting the air out of a balloon. Yeah, but like, electric. Ee. Like a slide whistle. Doo. Okay, so to figure out what's going on, I think we need to be able to start measuring things on the PCB. So we're going to disconnect this and take the back plate off. So Aaron's off getting a screwdriver, so I figured I'd do some recording. We're going to get this back plate off here. I've already unscrewed these screws, which actually hold the PCB directly to the board. So I've already unscrewed three of those screws. Now I'm going to unscrew these screws here that are going to uh, actually hold the metal plate in place. There's some more over there on that side. But what I'm really worried about is these screws down here, because they're going to be really annoying to try and get up with the screwdriver. Ugh.